Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled Vacant Spaces New York by Michael Meredith and Hilary Sample, published by Akhtar. This project began by walking around our neighborhood noticing empty storefronts. Once we saw them, they were everywhere. They followed us, appearing quietly throughout New York City. Many with no signage, no for rent, no coming soon. Usually empty, sometimes dusty, sometimes with brown paper covering the glass. Now vacancy has only increased. In the densest city in the United States, during a housing crisis, throughout a pandemic, the quantity of vacant spaces is anyone's best guess. It's only partially documented, they hide in plain sight. Within the city, there are multiple vacancies, retail, commercial, office, but storefronts and street-level spaces are the most noticeable. A majority are claimed as losses for tax write-offs, as we have found some large vacancies persist for years. An insistence on higher rents inflates profits and value, maintaining inflated property values throughout the city. Meanwhile, an immense housing shortage grows worse. The basic provocation of this study is that we do not need to solve large-scale problems with large-scale solutions, with more building, with additional infrastructure, with huge investments. Solutions exist that avoid the developers and those who have continuously profiteered off of what should be considered a fundamental right. Possibilities exist that don't take five to eight years to develop, that reinvigorate street level, that don't require massive investment with disproportionate returns, that are incremental and equitably distributed throughout the city. Housing and other social services should infiltrate our city through vacant space. We look at these immense retail vacancies as akin to the loft spaces left as Lower Manhattan they industrialized in the late 1950s and early 1960s. During this time, light manufacturing such as plastic warehouses, paper recycling facilities and garment factories moved from Soho out of the city or went out of business entirely. Manufacturing changed. Vacant lofts transformed into inexpensive live-work spaces. Still zoned for industrial use, these loft apartments were illegal at first, but community groups formed quickly and fought successfully for policy changes. Sometimes solutions to problems are already here, around us, if we rethink our assumptions, if we imagine other possibilities and if we organize. This research documents a small portion of the vacant spaces in Manhattan, those that have been reported. We worked with students from Princeton University's School of Architecture along with our architecture office, MOS, to document and draw the available data. New York City does not keep track of business or residential vacancies, instead relying on private companies to document and provide information. In their 2019 report on retail vacancy between 2007 and 2017, the city controller contracted a private company, Live XYZ, to document vacancies in the city. The information is opaque. Their sources and methodologies aren't clear. Larger corporate real estate holders often report their vacancies as losses, but many others do not. Because of this, it is nearly impossible to understand the extent of vacant spaces in New York. Most data is underreported. Harlem, where we live, is one neighborhood that is underreported. Our observations do not align with the reported data. We live our daily lives alongside entire blocks of vacant storefronts that are missing from data. 
The following document is organized from large to small, general to specific. It begins by looking at vacancy within the United States and continues down to each Manhattan neighborhood where we zoom into specific vacant spaces where we have provided case studies that imagine some possibilities for transforming current vacant spaces into housing or social services. As a whole, this document is not meant to provide specific solutions. The data is incomplete case studies are limited. We are not policy experts or data analysts or urban planners. Instead, it is simply meant to show something we have taken for granted, vacant spaces, taking part in a collective process of imagining a better city. New York City is made of five boroughs, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Staten Island, Queens and the Bronx. 1.6 million people live in Manhattan, 67,000 people per square mile, although the population grows by another 2.4 million during the weekdays, with the influx of visitors and commuters from out of the city. Yet, despite having one of the densest populations in the United States, New York also has a growing vacancy rate. Vacancy exists in the city in commercial, office and retail spaces, as well as housing. At an estimated 55.3 million, New York City has the most square feet of vacant office space in the country. Between 2017 and 2020, the New York housing vacancy rate for rental units nearly doubled and correlated with their price. The more expensive the rental bracket, the higher the vacancy rate. In order to afford a rental unit without being rent burden, the median renter would need to make $106,000, 107% more than the median renter income. Vacancies have been historically omitted in city policy and real estate development decisions that directly and indirectly cause them. While landlords who own just one or two buildings likely experience a financial burden keeping their property vacant in the hopes of a high-paying tenant, many buildings in Manhattan are owned by large companies or diversified landlords who are less impacted by a single vacant space. The extent of these corporations is hard to identify. The highest number of reported ground floor vacancies are not in lower economic areas, but luxury retail ones, uh, places where the building values and rents are highest. The top five neighborhood tabulation areas include Midtown, Midtown South, Soho, Tribeca, Civic Center, Little Italy, Hudson Yards, Chelsea, Flatiron, Union Square and the West Village. In these popular retail areas, vacancies are caused by maintaining artificially high property values. However, in lower income areas, vacancies suppress surrounding property values. According to a 2019 city controller report on retail vacancies, the empty space in Manhattan grew from 2.1 million square feet in 2007 to 4.3 million square feet in 2017, mostly due to a higher penalty for not submitting real property income and expense statements. We find that this is only a small percentage. Estimating the collected area of reported vacancies in Manhattan could be as much as 31.2 million square feet, nearly a third of all available retail space in Manhattan. Because the data on vacant spaces in New York City is opaque, we made our own observations. Photographing vacancies in each neighborhood, recording their property owner, time since the last documented occupancy, and rentable square footage. These represent only a small percentage of our findings and are proportional to the number of reported vacancies in each neighborhood. Of the 550 vacancies we documented, the average time left vacant was 1,316 days or 3.6 years. Vacancies in areas with high real estate value were more likely to have listings posted by real estate brokers. 
Although vacancies are located geographically in each of these neighborhoods, the tax relief associated with them often benefit financial institutions or individuals outside of the community. Most people in the neighborhood only feel their negative impacts. As for the book at your local bookstore, thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.